Brian McClanahan with HistoryThroughCards.com and today I thought I'd tell you a little bit about how I became a journalist through vintage sports cards. So growing up I didn't really have a very good formal education, uh, at least none that I thought. And by the fourth grade I had a teacher by the name of Mrs. Grace Kelly who took us on a field trip to the card store across the street from the school to help us learn about math and problem solving skills. Now, while I was there, I, I didn't see any math going on, uh, but I did see a couple of funny uh, looking cards in a case that ended up being uh, 1911 T205s, uh, 1909 T206s, uh, 1951 Tops, and uh, 1968 Tops Pete Rose. And I, I thought these were really interesting cards. They were fascinating. Um, and I wanted to learn as much as I could about them and the ball players and the teams. Uh, the, the problem was was that there wasn't a whole lot of information for me to go on, and I kind of gave it up. Uh, but for a few years later, I came across a, a magazine, um, which is oh, it's right here. It's so this is the 1991 Beckett uh, from from September of that year. And going through it, I came across an article uh, by Joanne Cash, and she was writing about a, a dead ball era pitcher who was turning 100 years old. His name was uh, Chester Red Hoff. And he came up with the New York Highlanders, and, and he, he played for, uh, on September 6th, he played his first game. Uh, versus the Senators, and, and he got into one um, inning, and, and he, he actually he lost. Uh, but um, about a week later, on September 18th, he was facing the Detroit Tigers and Ty Cobb, and he threw so hard that Cobb didn't have a chance to get his bat off of his shoulder, and he, he walked back to the dugout. But, you know, Cobb was so impressed by the pitcher that he took him on barnstorming tours and I, I wanted to look more into this uh, I was pretty interesting um, and so uh, Hoff himself only played 23 games uh, and in during his time from 1911 to 1913 and then he was picked up again in 1915 with the St. Louis Browns um, and, and he only had like a two and four one loss record in that time uh, but was what was uh, interesting was how much money he was making um, at the time of his career. He said he was making about $250 uh, a month or, or about uh, $4,580 um, in, in today's money in 2021. Uh, and that's vastly superior to what your average uh, worker was making in, say, 1916 which is about $700 a, a year, or about $2.50 a day. During his 100th birthday, Red was presented with a copy of a 1912 T207. And up at that point, he didn't know that he had a baseball card. He actually thought that that was uh, reserved for your superstars. Uh, so he was very surprised by that. Uh, for me personally, this just added more fuel to the fire, uh, and and I had actually written a story about the T207 set and Red, uh, in particular, um, in on my website. So a few more years go by, and the 1994 strike happens, and I uh, I was very upset with the ball players and the owners alike. And I didn't want to collect modern cards anymore, um, but I still wanted to get into the game. I, I love baseball. And at the same time, I was taking a print shop uh, to learn how these cards were actually made and printed. And I went to uh, art school afterwards for the very same purposes. And that's really kind of how I, I started going down the road of, of collecting vintage cards. We never know in which direction our life is going to lead us in or what may influence us in our life. It could be a good book, it could be a movie, it could be a teacher, or in my case it could be a baseball card. 
Another influence on my life was my grandfather, who was a reporter back in the 1930s uh, in Iowa. And at the same time, my grandfather was starting out, starting out uh, with the Evening Democrat. Uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Lionel Carter who was starting his 70-year career uh, as a writer in the hobby. And he has been very influential to me. Um, and I, I wrote a story about him uh, on my site. You know, Lionel, is, Lionel is really interesting because he started out as a teenager uh, in the 1930s uh, as a writer and a researcher into sports cards. So you could say he was one of the few um, at the time, and he was directly influenced by Jefferson Burdick. I often wonder how many people have been influenced by either Jefferson Burdick or Lionel Carter to become researchers, writers, or collectors. And I see a lot of similarities between the two eras. And I think that has a lot to do with the hobby content creators uh, today. And so I'd like to give a special shout out to some of my favorites. Uh, they are Dakota from Sports Cards Anonymous, Chris, collector, investor, dealer, uh, I think in that order, uh, Brad, the comeback card investor, uh, Dustin, the personal finance dad, um, and then I, I don't want to leave out the ladies either. Um, so Hannah from She Collects Cards and Sam from Women of the Hobby. Now, they all are fantastic and they all have their uh, different way of looking at the hobby. Uh, for instance, uh, Dustin on his channel has a great take called When sports cards are bigger than life. And similarly, um, Dakota interviewed FD from uh, Rolling with FD. And that was a really, really fantastic interview, at least that I thought. And I'm not going to tell you what they're all about. I want you to see them for yourself. And so I was on both of their shows, and at one point, Dustin wanted me to dis discuss my disability, uh, which is cerebral palsy. Uh, and at the time, I, I wasn't really comfortable with that because I don't want my disability to define me as a person, and I thought it would be distracting. And it, not only that, I, I think I have a voice for print and a face for radio. Um, but that given, we all start out at the same starting line, uh, whether it's uh, as a collector or as a dealer or as a writer or as a podcaster. And we're all here to learn and we all grow. Um, and, and the thing is, don't be afraid to make mistakes. We all make mistakes and hopefully we all learn from them. The only one who can stop you from achieving your goals in life is you. And I think you'd be very surprised about what you can achieve if you put your mind to it. So with that, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it and have a good day. Bye.